Hello, and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel with the imminent and or re recent release of Fire on the Frontier, new expansion for Blood and Plunder. We have a lot of new material to review. Today we're starting a new series focusing on some fortifications. I'm Joseph. I'm Guy. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Fortification Week. Fortifications have been around since the beginning of Blood and Plunder as specialized structures, but have recently been expanded upon with the release of Fire on the Frontier. In this episode, we're talking about the Palisade Fort. The Palisade Fort is a defensive fence made of tree trunks and is a linear fortification. This means that it is essentially modular and can be used in a variety of different shapes and sizes. Let's go over the Palisade Wall first. Each Palisade Wall is a 4-inch section and costs 2 points. Each section has a fortitude of 3 and integrity of 4. Each wall section can be a wall, corner, or gate. In addition to opening and closing, the gate can have a single field gun to shoot right through it. That's it for Palisade Walls. Now let's go over the Palisade Bastion. Bastion is a more a heavier structure, a square or diamond structure that goes at the corner of the fort. You can put cannons in. Each Palisade Bastion costs 5 points, and it would replace a corner wall section. The Palisade Bastion has a fortitude of four and integrity of four. Essentially, it's a bark, but on land. Two cannons and one swivel may be mounted on a bastion at a time. The bastion has four crenels, or embrasures, allowing the cannons to cover the, all sides of the bastion in the four cardinal directions. Bastion has two special rules. The Bastion rule, which lets you mount and dismount cannons so you can there's four ports only two cannons at a time though but you can use a dedicated action to dismount them and then another one to remount them on a different uh, opening and it has reinforced platform which lets you mount heavy cannons which is exciting i've used the palisade fort a lot and i love it yeah it seems like we've been playing we got that a long time ago when we did a lot of play tests and it's exciting to see it finally out yeah, we played how many games with this? Probably a good, a, a good dozen. I've I've played yeah. it with at least a dozen times. So this is a new kind of uh, fortification, new kind of structure. It has this uh, linear uh, fortification rule, so it's not a full blown structure. It's more like almost like a breastwork, but not quite. So you can occupy it. But you only one unit per section rather than two, like a normal structure. Unless it's a bastion. Right. Bastion is more like a building. But the wall itself can have up to one unit. Um, it has a parapet guy stand on to shoot over. You can climb over it from the front with a, if you need to do a charge action. That's a dedicated climb. So it's pretty tough to get over. Uh, and you can kind of lay them out however you want. Like you said, you can make a variety of different shapes and sizes of forts, which is a lot of fun. You get Legos and Blood and Plunder. Yeah, it's kind of a building or a ship that you build yourself. You decide how you want it to look. It's also one of the ones that uh, the Native Americans can take. So, they're, they're great on this. Uh, hiding on a wall section and shooting arrows over all days is a lot of fun. Yeah, the Indians didn't use a uh, a variety of different wood fortifications and they're pretty effective until they started to just burn each other up with it. That was nasty. But um, yeah, in blood and plunder, they have a six save. So Indians behind a wall consistently uh, save on five and they can shoot a lot standing up there with their arrows. And it's good for everybody. I've, I consider this a pretty strong element of the game. It's hard to overcome a fort, once you get it in the right place, which is a whole different topic, but um, how many games have you lost with the fort? Only about uh, three, I think. Yeah, overall, it seems to be a pretty advantageous piece. And how much does it usually cost to build a fort? It adds up, and you can yeah. make quite a few different. So the one that you can buy from Firelock right now has four wall sections and four corners, basically. So that's 16 points. Pretty small for it, but it does a lot. 
Yeah, it does. Uh, the and really with those eight pieces that unlocks the thing that we haven't mentioned, where uh, if you have eight sections in, together in a linear fortification pushed together, then your commander, as long as they're in that fortification, gets an extra command point that can be rally or move, and his command range extends to the whole interior of the fort. Right. Representing that advantageous interior lines kind of idea. I really like the idea of putting a field gun right at the gate. I think it's a little silly and really hilarious. <laughs> I think we, I had uh, that one game with you, Joseph, where I thought you should have put two heavy cannons, the two gates facing the the water edge on an amphibious game, and just put <laughs> yeah. two heavy cannons right there, and then you would have four cannons facing where you knew I was going to be popping out of. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> That would hurt a lot. Yeah. It's really the the uh, gates are kind of like the secret sauce of the fort because there's not any negatives really for including more gates. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, they probably should. Yeah, that's funny. You could have a whole fort of gates. That'd be silly. <laughs> Open the, the gates, can- fire the cannons, water, close the gates, reload, rinse and repeat. <laughs> It takes a dedicated action to open a gate. So, <laughs> yeah, and they can shoot through the gate. You don't even have to open it. But you have command points. <laughs> That's what they're for. <laughs> so fortifications change the game quite a bit. It definitely puts your force on defensive because you don't want to really abandon it. You paid a bunch for it. You want to stay in it, which makes you less flexible. Gives the other guy the initiative, but also forces him to go out in the open. One of the rules for fortifications is that player owning the fortifications gets to clear all area terrain up to eight or nine inches around that fort clearing their line of fire making nice kill zones it was difficult to rush across that with no cover and being shot at yeah so some scenarios quite good at good for where you can defend but some uh that are more symmetrical where both parties need to take a central objective or something to forts or less ideal for which makes it dynamic and interesting but also you never know you kind of want to decide what kind of scenario you're doing before you pick a fort isn't that a rule that if you take fortifications you're automatically the defender though i could have sworn i read that somewhere yes but some scenarios even if you're the defender like take and hold you have to run to the middle of the board and take the objective and if you're sitting in the back of the board in your fort you aren't going to take and hold very well. <laughs> You're not getting the yeah. objective. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should mention that right now the bastions aren't available. They've been sculpted and cast. Some of them have been cast, but Firelock's been having issues with resin. So they're supposed to be coming as soon as they can get resin. And the quantity they need, the bastions are pretty hefty chunks of resin. So they should be out early 2022. They are not right now, but the Bastion Fort is currently available. It's uh, also, as of 2022 January, it is priced at $79, which for what you get in the box is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's eight pieces, pieces of resin. Uh, nice, a not really nice addition to your game. It looks attractive, um, and you can set it up a couple different ways. If you're going to do a big fort, Extra wall sections are nice, but then you have to buy two when you have the extra corners, so it's a little bit hard to manage. There are some other um, Palisade models out there if you do a little poking around, but they aren't quite as nice. But you can get bigger sets as well. I had more straight walls, which are nice. So, Or even make your own. They, If you have sharpened sticks and little blocks to put it on, that's completely fine. Just make each section only four inches long. Yeah, if you're handy. I've seen some good stuff people have made. I tried to make a native palisade fort, and it was just short of disastrous, and it's still languishing in a shoebox under my hobby table. <laughs> yeah, you went and bought the Goblin Village instead. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy configuring a fort in different ways. It's fun to look at some of the plans that the archaeology has dug up for various forts. These wooden palisade forts, they didn't last very long. So there's obviously no 
real surviving examples like there is stone forts. Uh, they would only last 10, 20 years before they had to be rebuilt because they just rotted out. Yep. <laughs> There's records of guys rushing up and just shoving the wall over because the it rotted at the ground line. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't exactly yeah. have ye oldie rust oleum to preserve anything. Uh, they, had, yeah. they had stuff to do, but sometimes they didn't even do it because they just need a fort now. They can whack one of these together so at some level in a week or two, um, depending on how rough and small they needed. But doing a bastion on two corners to make like a diamond shape is kind of fun. Or if you know you're going to be attacked from only one side, you can put two bastions in the front. Or just put one bastion if you only a small game with just a few cannons. A lot of creativity and uh, diversity in how you can use the pieces once you get the bastions and enough wall pieces to make a flexible. Or you can just wall off part, maybe a corner of the board or a part of a side, and you don't have to have an entire enclosed space. You can have your wall, your fort extend off the boards. So you can have a wider wall a longer wall and still not have to pay for every single piece. I've enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, me too. Fun to paint too. Oh, I used a bad paint on mine. I had to put like three coats just to get the brown solid. Oh so no. I hated it, but I'm working on another model Palisade for it and I got better paint. I have a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you're enjoy land games and playing some defensive different styles of games where you can hunker down and use your interior lines and get some cannons behind some um, wooden walls. This is really fun. I highly recommend it. I think it's a strong part, a uh, strong choice for list building. You'll win some games with it and it'll be very different than a lot of the games you've played before. I agree. For more Blood and Plunder articles on fortifications and on Fire on the Frontier, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out what we have over there. We have articles on ships and nations and factions and terrain and painting guides and battle report reports. Go check it out there. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. And as always, keep your dice ready and the wind at your back. Yarhar!